Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your readings for September 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to give a big old shout out to all the Virgos out there. Very, very happy birthday to you. We are officially in Virgo season as far as Western astrology is concerned. And I want to give a shout out to the September Libras. Yes, very happy birthday to you guys as well. So please keep in mind that these are general readings. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like to look into your own personal situation please go ahead and email me all the information is in the description box below yeah so for those of you that are new I want to give you a little bit of insight as to these readings on my channel these are not really specific to anything obviously we are doing this by sign but this is not love or career specific okay this is you could think of this as just the the messages that spirit has for you uh, having a conversation or a discussion with spirit about what is going on in your life at this time also keep in mind that just because these are dated for september of 2019 these readings are meant to be timeless yeah so whenever this resonates for you if it's in september if it's after september of 2019 please just take that message if it resonates for you at that time then that's the message for you at this time i i am speaking to the zodiac sign in question here but as a cross watcher you know this could be something that resonates for you as well if you are watching for someone uh, if you're cross watching for someone yeah I would love it if you guys would follow me if you're not already doing so on Instagram you can find me at divine underscore conversations you can also find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash divine conversations 2711 if you would like to book a personal reading with me please just email me um, Instagram would be a good uh, other another option you know to to choose um, but Facebook is not a good option. Like I, I even mentioned this in my video last month. Um, I rarely check my Facebook messages. I don't always get them right away also. So if you're trying to get a reading with me, the best bet is to just find my email address in the description box below and email me there. I also have all of the readings that I offer and their prices and descriptions listed in the description box below. So if you would like a reading, please read through that and then email me. Again, Instagram is a good alternative, but that always isn't the most reliable, okay? The, your best bet, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, is to just email me, okay? With that said, I guess we're ready, so let's get to it. <laughs> Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading for September 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we get started, I just want to let you guys know you might hear a bunch of construction going on outside. Um, they did tear down the building across the street and now they're in the pro they're still in the process of clearing out the lot. So you might hear some of that as we go through our reading. I apologize if it becomes too distracting, but we are pushing on yes all right here we go scorpio so as i was tuning into your energy um i got this sense of just like some sort of like cuddly nature like almost like i just wanted to cuddle you up like you were a little pet and i just wanted to like like you were a little puppy or a little dog and i just wanted to smush you and give you kisses and all that kind of stuff i don't know what's going on here <laughs> but you scorpio you might be in that kind of energy all right. The first card that came out is the Page of Cups. And what I and what I'm hearing with this Page of Cups energy is new love. Now, this could be a new love for yourself, a new sense of emotional understanding. Or this could be new love for another person. OK, follow that. Following that, you have the Chariot, Cancerian energy. The King of Swords, uh, uh, Aquarian Energy, Nine of Cups, the Page of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles. I feel like you, as a result, oh, and then also under on the bottom of the deck, you do have the Emperor. All right, I do feel like this is you, or um, maybe this is someone else that you're connecting to, okay? But um, I really do feel like you've been going through, you've gone through some sort of period of self-discovery. You may still be going through that period of self-discovery, but it's leading you to some sort of wish fulfillment, all right? And it's either leading you to embody uh, this Queen of Pentacles energy, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, or you resonate more with masculine energy or not, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, the Queen of Pentacles energy is like a mother, is a caregiver, is a nurturer, is grounded, is stable, is secure. 
Um, it's also Capricorn energy, but <laughs> yeah, the Queen of Pentacles is like boss lady. But either you're embodying this energy or, and this is the strongest thing I feel like, I feel like there is someone around you Someone that you have manifested into your life or a connection with someone that you have manifested that embodies this Queen of Pentacles energy. And for some of you, I'm hearing it's a counterpart because you do have the masculine and feminine in the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, all right? And it's through this period of self-discovery self-understanding that it's bringing you to this wish fulfillment it's bringing you into some sort of balance here of wanting to, of wanting to move forward yes of moving forward of traveling this could this could mean travel all right and then i was uh, cards kept wanting to come out so then underneath the emperor you have strength underneath strength you have the fool underneath the fool you have the six of wands so there could be an energy of wanting to move, wanting to travel, or if not, just going in a new direction that's gonna bring you some victory here, Scorpio, all right? And the biggest thing that I'm getting from this is this is an, a, a, an achievement, a victory, something that you have achieved all on your own by doing your internal work. So maybe you're in the process of doing this internal work right now, and this is going to be the result of it. Maybe you've been doing this work. Ooh, look at what just came out, the Ten of Pentacles. I'm getting a very strong family vibe from this. Some of you are going to be able to build a family. Some of you are in the process of building a family. Some of you want to build a family. Also, the Ten of Pentacles is a completion, is a lesson learned. I feel like for some of you, if you're wondering, <laughs> there's the Queen of Pentacles again. If you're wondering if the cycle is coming to a close, if you learned your lesson, yes, in fact, you have. And I do feel like a Queen of Pentacles, someone that's gonna wanna build with you is either around you or is coming. All right. Now, you could, this could be you. You could be this queen of pentacles. And so because of that, then, all right, then the masculine counterpart would be coming forward, regardless of whether you are a man or a woman, regardless of whether you're gay sex, you're, you're gay sexual. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you're gay, uh, straight, bisexual, asexual, it doesn't matter. Your counterpart. I feel like is manifesting into your life. Oh, damn. And look, there's the king of swords at the bottom of the deck. There it is. The masculine is very, much, well, is very much in the logical aspect right now. Whereas the queen of the, the, the feminine is in the homebody aspect. Now that doesn't mean that she's not logical because if you followed me for some time, then you know that I kind of see the queen of swords and the queen of pentacles as being very much best friends because both of them are very, very, very logical, all right? So the Queen of Pentacles in this sense does feel like a counterpart to the King of Swords. I just feel like whoever is the King of Swords right now, and Scorpio, this might be you, Three of Pentacles, okay. Uh, the energies are working together. This is self-mastery, this is also teamwork, but the masculine counterpart here is very much in his logical energy and is being as diplomatic as possible, is wanting to see things clearly, no emotion involved. I feel like you're in a period right now where you need to make a choice, whomever the King of Swords is. And this could be you. Oh, look at that. Ace of Cups is underneath the deck. All right, I'm just gonna keep, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna get it pushing, get it moving, and we're gonna get into the rest of the, the reading for you. All right, Scorpio? All right, cool. Cool, man, cool. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Spirit saying one more shuffle. Okay, one more shuffle. There you are, Scorpio, King of Cups. Emotional responsibility. This could even be love, man. Love may really be driving you right now, Scorpio. Alrighty, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Scorpios at this time. Sun, moon, rising, and a Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of September 2019. Ooh. 
Ooh, all right, Scorpio. Five shuffles for you. Okay, but let me tell you, man, I am seeing some strong purple energy for you. There is a ton of divine wisdom coursing through you right now. And that is leading your way. It is helping you make decisions. And I'm seeing the King of Cups here. So there is a, 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 a for whomever I'm channeling for right now, there is a shit ton, a ton of emotional responsibility that you are making moves from right now. And spirit is encouraging this. And it's through this purple energy or this divine wisdom, maybe even these downloads that you're receiving, that you are even able to stand up and be as emotionally responsible as you are right now. And that has everything to do with accepting elements from your past as well. Woo! All right, Scorpio. Let's give you five shuffles here and we'll see what we've got for you, okay? Here we go. One. For my Scorpios, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Now I'm also seeing pink, a very strong pink, too. Pink is a color of unconditional love, divine love. Oof. Three. Love may be driving you right now. This might be the love of someone else, or it could, the love someone else is sharing with you, the love some, that you feel for someone else, or this is just unconditional love that you are tapping into, all right? Number four, for my Scorpios. Sun, moon rising, and Venus, and five. I keep wanting to add Jupiter in there, but I haven't been doing so, and I don't want to start in the middle of doing it, but if you want to look for your Jupiter sign here too, then go for it. And five. From the Scorpios. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Here we go. For the month of September, 2019. Boop. All right, Scorpio. Mm, excuse me. Okay, <laughs> let's see what we've got here for you, or uh, Scorpio. Overall energy, you got the Ace of Pentacles. Bam! Brand new beginning, brand new start. This could be a new financial endeavor. This could be a new job. But I'm hearing spiritual awakening in association with this, which is allowing you, helping you, influencing you, catalyzing you towards creating a new surface reality whoa that's interesting i've never heard it that way a new surface reality that could be a, the surface as in like the surface of the earth so your physical incarnation or it's the surface of your being changing the way you approach the external world changing the way you perceive the external world changing the way you present yourself in the external world all right, Scorpio. Underneath the Ace of Pentacles, you've got ooh, the Seven of Swords. Hmm. I'm not going to lie, Scorpio. This doesn't surprise me. Because this feels like your energy. Are you not being honest about something? Are you not being truthful about something? Or is it that you are keeping this, whatever this Ace of Pentacles represents for you, you're keeping this under wraps? Not communicating about it, not talking about it, not sharing. That's not such a bad thing. I'm not going to lie. Because it's not like you want everybody to know all of your plans. Like, what if you have some enemies out there that are looking to sabotage you? You don't want to put all your plans out there for someone to try and meddle in, right? Okay, all right, all right, cool. That's all right. Also, though, this Ace of Pentacles, this new job, this new career, this new start, whatever, it might seem a little elusive. You may not see it coming. There may be some sort of deception around it. All right. Underneath the Seven of Swords, you've got the Six of Swords. Look at that. Underneath the Six of Swords, you've got your own self. Death. So what I'm really getting here, Scorpio, 
number one, I'm hearing you're changing the way you see things, you're changing the way you approach things, but also I feel like you're leaving the deception, the lies, the cheating, the backstabbing, trying to get away with something, whether that's you, whether that's you or someone else, external reality, someone, people around you, you're leaving all that shit behind. The Six of Swords has come out in all three of the readings that I've done today. I, did, I started with Virgo and now I'm on Scorpio. I think I'm gonna stop at Scorpio just for today, but the Six of Swords has come out in all three of these readings. Okay? <clears throat> so there's a lot of energy of leaving some past situations behind. And for you specifically, Scorpio, this means leaving some sort of deception behind, whether it's your own deception or the deception of another. Transformation that is allowing you to start anew, to have a new, a new lease on life. Okay? All right, Scorpio. So getting into the rest of your reading here, first half, second half of your reading, you could look at this as the first half and second half of your month. I say, look at it as the first half, second half of your reading. That's just my personal opinion. Why? Time is an illusion, energies are fluid. This reading is meant to be timeless anyway. But if it does resonate as first half, second half of your month, please, by all means, take it that way. Yes? First set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading here, Scorpio, you got the page of cups again new love for sure for some of you a new emotional beginning a new start i'm there may even be some desire for reconciliation either from you or maybe another person but what i'm really getting to be quite honest scorpio what i'm really getting from this page of cups is i just want to be happy again I just want to be fa uh, fancy free, carefree. I, I want to live my life from the eyes of a child. I want to see the world from the eyes of a child again. I don't want to feel the pain from all of this deception anymore. Ooh. I feel like crying. <laughs> just because of the yearning for a new, this is like literally, and maybe this is why I wanted to cuddle you or I was feeling cuddly energy. It feels like you just, you want, some of you, you just want to be loved again. Some of you want to feel love again. You're tired of being so jaded. You're tired of dealing with dishonesty and cruelty, whether it's by your own hand or by the hands of another. That's what I'm getting with this page of cups. Page of cups is coupled with the world. Interesting. I just got feelings of a home life. I feel like maybe this is whatever is going on for you right now, whatever transformation you're going through with the death card that is at the bottom of the deck right now has to do with situations from your childhood. Some sort of situations that may have stunted your emotional growth may be coming to a close here. And now you can look at the world from the aisles of a child again. You can feel excited and want to just express yourself, want to express the love that you have within. You're coming to a place where you can do that. That's gorgeous. Second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Scorpio, you have the Four of Swords. All right. So you're in a contemplative mode right now. You're analyzing. You're going through the details. You're meditating. You're trying to find peace, silence. You're, I also feel like you're either you're staying patient or you need to stay patient. And if you're not doing it already, maybe the advice is to take some time to meditate as this cycle close out, closes out, excuse me, Four of Swords is coupled with the Hierophant. What have you learned here, Scorpio? Contemplate, meditate on that. The Hierophant is about teaching and learning. It's also Taurus energy. But what have you learned here, Scorpio? In your endeavors, in your trysts, within I don't know, the physical world, 
society, maybe even religion, conformity. That has been a theme also for these readings here. Not so much you guys. Scorpio, you don't have this theme of conformity really coming through strongly. But Virgo and Libra, sure as shit did. Woof. For you, Scorpio, I do feel like there has been an element of conformity from your past. But the point is here, regardless of whatever it is, regardless what this represents for you, Scorpio, specifically, personally, right? Because this is a general reading. What have you learned here, Scorpio? That's what you're needing to comprehend right now. Okay? Your challenge in the first half of your reading. The Queen of Wands. Interesting. Is there a magnetic pull you are feeling towards someone? Or is this your own energy? This is Aries energy. Could also be Leo or Sagittarius, but either way, it doesn't really matter. I think for some of you, your, your challenge here is embodying the energy of this Queen of Wands that can manifest anything she wants. She just pulls it towards her. She is a magnet. She is magical. Stepping into your magical abilities. Whether you are a man or a woman or you resonate more with masculine energy or not, doesn't matter. Okay? We're talking energy, not gender. And the energy of the Queen of Wands is charismatic, vibrant, fun-loving, sexy, funny, intelligent, magical. Like she is the embodiment of magic. If there was going to be one card in the deck that represented a witch, it would probably be the Queen of Wands. Maybe the High Priestess. Maybe. Uh, in my opinion, it would be the Queen of Wands. And witches are not bad. All right. Queen of Wands is coupled with the Seven of Cups. What do you want to manifest, Scorpio? Your challenge is to get to the core of what it is you truly desire and then get yourself in the vibrational match to it so you can manifest it, okay? Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Scorpio. You got, ooh, the five of wands. All right, but this feels like internal conflict surrounding what it is you want to create for yourself. And there could be a bunch of people externally that are um, putting their two cents in when, I don't know, maybe it's unsolicited, maybe it is solicited, but maybe you're getting too much advice from too many different sources and you really just need to Figure it out for yourself. Listen to your own internal dialogue and your own inner guidance as to which direction you want to be moving in or what you want to manifest. Okay? Five of Wands is coupled with, you know, the Five of Cups. All right. There is a lot of pain in the past. There is a lot of pain in their past. And that might be keeping you from making your decision. It might be clouding your judgment as to what it is you want to manifest moving forward. But keep in mind, ooh, ooh, excuse me, Scorpio, keep in mind that all is not lost here. No matter what you may have lost in the past, it's all not lost because you still have the two cups standing behind you. What has spilled is toxic and you need to let it go, all right? Some of you may be having trouble with that, with the Five of Wands energy, but... Some of you may have a big move to make or are changing your direction in a major way and you're needing to leave some of the past behind you, but you're, co you're conflicted by it. I've just heard abandonment issues, okay? <laughs> But if the situation was toxic, why wouldn't you want to leave it behind? It's a damn good question. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Scorpio, first set of surrounding energies, you've got the Page of Wands again. Self-discovery. You've got two pages in... Um, 
the first set of surrounding energies here. So in the beginning of the reading, you're dealing with the emotions. Okay. In the second half or the, the latter half of the, the reading, you're dealing with self-discovery, understanding yourself on a deeper level, which would allow you to move forward in a new direction, okay? To know what it is you want to go after. The Page of Wands could also be a new creative environment. Uh, yes, okay. A new creative endeavor, a new creative environment, a new environment altogether. A new passion, a new passion project. Yeah. Page of Wands is coupled with the Hermit. And it's funny because I do see the Page of Wands as a minor arcana version of the Hermit. And the Hermit represents a path of self-discovery. This is taking your inner light that you're learning of, you're finding slowly but surely, and allowing it to shine in the external. Bringing it forward, manifesting it in your physical reality. That's beautiful. And it's either taking the time to, to learn this, to go about this, this learning process about yourself with the, the hermit and then allowing it to manifest, or you have already done this. You've already been on a path of self-discovery. And now it's about expressing what it is you've learned. Now you're at that point. Okay. That's great, Scorpio. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Scorpio, you have the Seven of Wands. Standing your ground. Ooh, boundaries, I'm hearing. Securing boundaries. Maintaining boundaries. Being on the defensive. Try not to be on too much of a defensive. But what I'm getting with this card is this is what I want. This is who I am. This is direction I'm moving in and you can't do anything to stop me. Gone, Scorpio. Seven of Wands is coupled with the Eight of Pentacles. But this is also giving you the boundaries, like we were saying, to give you the space and freedom you need to do your work. To craft your art. Your art may be yourself. This is the hard work, the mundane, repetitive, maybe even mindless work or work that becomes mindless because it's just so competitive. But in that sense, it could be meditative too, right? But this is setting yourself the boundaries that you need so that you can continue to do your work. I like it, Scorpio. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you have mm -hmm, the Five of Pentacles. Yes, that makes sense. Dealing with the energies of feeling less than, feeling lack, feeling not good enough. You're going to have to face that either this month or through this and this energetic cycle for you. You're going to have to face that. Especially if you're embarking on a new creative adventure, a new creative uh, venture, uh, uh, starting a brand new path in your life, you're going to have to face the feelings of inadequacy. But you're facing them in an effort to move through them, to expand beyond them, and to not let it hold you back any longer. And there's, a lot of, there's also fear associated with this as well, is what I'm hearing, okay? Five of Pentacles is coupled with ah, the sun, Leo energy, but also recognizing that you are, in fact, good enough. You may have been left out in the cold in the past, recently even, but it's okay. You got this. The sun, the sun is shining on these spaces in your life saying, really look at those spots where you think you're not good enough. See how my light shines on it. And then you tell me again how unworthy you are. Because quite frankly, my friend, I am just not seeing it. <laughs> Says the sun. It's like, lit really, are you sure about that? Maybe you should look again. Because I really don't see it. 
You are worthy. You are good enough. You have everything that you need to make this happen. The only thing standing in your way is yourself. So stop doing that and let's get moving. <laughs> That's a direct channel from the sun card here. <laughs> okay. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Scorpio. Ooh, the tower. This is you. You're showing up twice in your reading. Between the death card that's on the bottom of the deck and the and the tower, which represent which is can represent your energy. There's a change coming. Did the tower come out in your pre-shuffle? Yes, it did. I don't remember now. Doesn't matter. I know it came out in Libras. Anyway. I'm hearing the tower is a change of residency, a change in a home environment. A new source of creative material, a new source of creative energy, a new source of creative inspiration even. But it's a massive upheaval as well. Like in order for this to happen, there needs to be great change. The tower is coupled with the Knight of Cups. Extending some sort of emotional energy, emotional opportunity to someone potentially. But I do also feel like that this tower energy, whatever this tower would represent for you, if it's a physical, uh, uh, something actually happening, a circumstance, a situation, whatever, it leads to more of an open heart. And looky here, you've gone from the Page of Cups to the Knight of Cups by the end of your reading. That's progress. Standing up for yourself, standing up for your truth, your light, your integrity, your honesty, living from a more emotionally vulnerable space, but that's because you're strong enough to handle it. I do see the Knight of Cups as an energy of someone who lives with their heart on their sleeve or something like that, which really isn't that bad of a thing. Okay. A new emotional reality. A change in your life that allows you to be more emotionally available, emotionally vulnerable. All right, guys. So now we're going to close your reading with Oracle Guidance here for your month of September. Here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, for my Scorpios for the month of September to close out this reading. September 2019. There it is. Right dirt. Card number four. Ooh. Against the grain. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> what is that? Some weird film on my card. Interesting. What is that? That's kind of gross. Okay, here we go. Card number four. Against the grain. Let's see what this has to say. You want birds to be able to fly underwater. You want love to trump power. You want humanity to relate to each other as equals and to recognize the sacredness in you and in the world around you. You want to unleash the beauty that hides in even the ugliest of scenes or sentiments. You want to make possible what others say cannot be. You are a radical dreamer, a sacred rebel, and you bring the light of a more positive future to this world. However, this can have its burdens. Deep within you may feel deep within you may feel that you don't really fit in with the rest of the world. Perhaps your sense of how things can be and how they really are is so different in the smaller minds or more fearful hearts of many others that you are rarely received for all that you offer. This might make you feel frustrated, thwarted, or lonely at times. The universe so loves you for your unusual take on things, for the quirkiness in you that dares to honor that which is different and renders the impossible possible. You must never ever lose your unusual ways and become dry, serious, appropriate, and conventional, not even for appearance's sake, for you would lose your essence. 
You are here to show that life is about so much more than conventional success. This oracle comes with a special message for you. You are someone who lives and breathes in the depths of creative waters. You need to loose yourself to the flow of music, nature, dreams, imagination, and fantasy through art and literature, literature, meditation, dance, and in sensual surrender to the sacred waters of the ocean, the river, the lake, or the bathtub. You must go against the grain. It is just your way. You are not one of the followers, but one of the agitators. However, yours is not a force of disrespectful chaos. You are a loving catalyst, and by simply being yourself, you constantly remind people that there is always another way. This oracle comes with the particular guidance that you are meant to be exactly as you are. You are meant to be the black sheep, the rainbow sheep, or even the wild wolf in the flock of sheep. The daring butterfly spirit calling to the caterpillars, that is you. The price you pay for the gift of individuality is that you must take care of it and guard it so that you are not dulled down and conditioned into playing at being something you are not. If this happened or is threatening to happen, this oracle brings you comfort. You will always dream of birds that fly underwater. You know that the true nature of your being can never be changed. At most, it could only be hidden for a time. Now is the time to accept who you are and allow your truths to be fully expressed. Don't worry about the effects of going against the grain. When we are who we are in truth, we attract the support, protection, and energy that we need to thrive. Your power comes from aligning your outward self and your inner truth, not with the general consensus. You will then find other dreamers, other wild butterflies, and atypically colored sheep to join you in conjuring better versions for our world. Well, ain't that some beautiful shit? <laughs> so there you have it, Scorpio. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that, I hope you guys have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of October. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!